the last lesson, we created simple buttons to manage the playback of our video. This time we're going to get a little more advanced and create an interactive timeline and playhead for seeking through our video. We're going to use the jQuery UI slider element as the basis for our timeline because it mimics the look and feel and manages all the dragging events for us. So let's get back to the source code from our previous lesson. Inside of our controls, we want to add a div and we'll give it an ID of seek. And that's all the markup you need to create a jQuery slider element. And I've actually created some CSS to position the seeker bar next to our buttons. And you can see that here. So now we actually have to set up our slider. Now, we want our slider to have the minimum of zero, as in the start of our video, zero seconds. But we want the maximum to be the number of seconds our video is. Now, we actually need to get that information from the video itself, and that won't necessarily be available right as the page loads. So what we actually have to do is wait until the metadata has loaded for the video. So what we're actually going to do is wrap our video in a jQuery call, and we're actually going to listen for the loaded metadata event. And when that's called, we will actually set up our slider. Let's give us some room here to work. So the first thing we want to do is grab a reference to our seeker div. So we'll say seek equals and use the jQuery to find our seek element. So we're going to set up our slider. So we'll say seek.slider and we're going to pass it some options. Now our minimum is zero because the beginning of our video is zero seconds. And our maximum we want to be the duration of our video. So we say max is video dot duration. Let's see if we have our slider set up now. And now we see our slider here. Now we can move it around but it doesn't actually do anything with our video. So as we're playing it doesn't update itself and as we slide it around it's not yet actually updating our video. So we can fix that really easily. So what we want to do is add a stop callback so when the user stops dragging it, we can update the current time of our video. So we'll give it a stop callback and pass it a function. And that will give us an event and the UI object. And inside of that, we want to say video.currentTime equals. And inside the UI object, there is a value, which will be the current value. And so if we switch over to our video again and click play, if we drag the slider somewhere, and now we're in the middle of the video. But you'll notice that the slider is not actually progressing as the video plays. So what we have to do is we have to listen on the video, and every time the time is updated, we want to update the value of the slider to match that. So let's go back to our JavaScript. And we're done with the setup of our slider. And now we actually want to listen for a specific event on the video. So again, we're going to wrap the video in jQuery. And we're going to listen for the time update event. So inside this function, what we want to do is take the seek, take the seek element and call slider. And we're going to set the value to videos current time. So basically this means every time our video's time updates in the browser, whether it's playing or being seeked by the user or anything else, it's going to call this time update and we're going to use its current time to set the value of our slider. So save this out, reload our page, let's click our play button and we can see that it's moving around. If we move it really quick, we can get it across. Now there's one more thing. See, if we don't drag it around very quickly while it's still playing, every time the time updates while we're dragging it, it's again trying to set the value of our slider. So we get this jumping back and forth. So what we want to do is when we start dragging it, we want to pause it. And then when we stop dragging it, we want to play it again. So let's go back to our code. So let's listen for the slider's start event. 
And this means the user has started dragging it. So when the user starts dragging the handle, it could already be paused, in which case we don't want to restart the video once they stop dragging. We want to keep it paused. So we're going to actually have to remember whether when they started dragging, whether or not it was paused. We're going to create a paused variable to maintain that state. So when we start up, we're going to say paused equals video.paused. And now, no matter what, whether it's paused or not, we actually do want to pause the video. So we'll say video.pause. And now we remember if it was paused before, and now it is paused. Now in the stop function, if the video was originally not paused, we want to play the video again. So let's go back to our browser and reload the page. And we'll click play. Now as I start dragging here, you can see that the video pauses, so we're able to drag it around as slowly as we like without the video resetting the value of our slider. And then we drop it, it begins playing again. Now if we have it paused, we can drag it around, and it should not start playing as soon as we drop it, but it will change the time. And there you have it. With those few techniques under your belt, you're ready to create your own HTML5 video player control interface, styled just how you like it. In future lessons, we're going to take a look at some more advanced techniques like combining HTML5 video with a canvas to create your own special effects.